this next one's called double ton number. We will call a natural number a double ton number if it contains exactly two distinct digits. For example, 23, 35, 100, and 12,121 are doubleton numbers, and 123 and 9,980 are not. Notice that there are two distinct digits in each of these first group of numbers, even though there's three numbers in 100, two of them are zero, so the only two digits used are one and zero, and then this one, the only two digits used are one and two. But these ones obviously have three different digits, so they're not double tons. For a given natural number n from one to one million, you need to find the next double ton number. If n itself is a double ton, return the next bigger double ton than n. And they have more examples of what the actual function should do, right? Not just whether it's a double ton or not. You always got to get the next one. So uh, from 120, if you go up to 121, you're down to just two distinct digits again. One, two, three, four. Uh, feel free to think about that. It goes up to 1311. It's the first time you hit uh, a double ton number when you have to add numbers to it, right? And 10 uh, would go to 12. You couldn't use 11, right? Because that would only have one distinct digit. And so you end up with 12 in that case. Even though 10 itself is a double ton, they say don't take it. If the input is one, get the next one. So come on over and try this one out. Come back when you're ready. Okay, I'm going to use some link methods as you may have suspected. And I'm going to make a private helper method. That's gonna make life a lot easier for me. I'm gonna private static and it's going to be it's going to return a boolean and it's just going to tell me if any given number is a double ton or not and so i'll call it is double ton and i'll take an integer that i'll also call num which you can name however you like and for this let's see what can we do we want to basically figure out how many unique digits are in the number and when we were looking at the characters of an integer in a previous challenge, we noted that we could use two string to convert to a collection of characters, and that made things easier. So I'm going to leverage that here too. I'm going to say num to string. Now at this point I have a string, and we know that's enumerable. It can be viewed as a collection of characters. So if you look at the methods of the enumerable class, You'll notice there's one here called distinct, and this is perfect. Returns distinct elements from a sequence. The result sequence is unordered. And so let's check the examples. This is a good one. Look at these ages in here and note that there's a lot of repetition. When you call distinct on it, your output is only four unique numbers. So that's a good way of getting toward our end goal. There's a little more work to do beyond that, but we'll start there. So from this string, I'm going to call distinct. Now this is gonna create a new collection, right? Uh, you can see here it's an I enumerable of type int. In our case, our input is characters, so it'll be I enumerable of characters. And so, we can use another enumerable property to figure out how many of them there are, right? To basically say the size of this new collection. And again, if you check your methods in enumerable, it's good to look over these from time to time, you know, just scan it every now and then and you start to get ideas of what's in here. Take last, you know, you just, you get ideas. Then you run into problems and you think, hey, I've seen something like that. Anyway, uh, there's one called count. And this just returns the number of elements in the sequence. Perfect. So if I add count to this, that's basically telling me how many distinct numbers there are in this integer. That's great. So I can say return 
that count is equal to two, right? That's the definition of a double ton. There's exactly two distinct digits. So that's what this does. So this is really handy now. I can just check any number I want. So let's implement the main method. Uh, let's start. We know we can't accept the input parameter itself. We always have to get the next one in the event that it is a double tom passed in. If it's not, we still need to move forward, right? Until we get one. So I'm going to make something, a local variable here, integer called next num, which is going to start out as num plus one. And that, you know, it, it grabs the next value. If it was 10, now it's 11. And then I can say, since I have this handy method, while not is double ton next num. I don't recall if we've done a while loop, but we'll talk about that. While not is double ton next num, we're going to simply increment it, right? So imagine we had been, we had had our 10 input, next num starts at 11. We're going to get to this while, it's going to check the condition. It's going to say, is double ton 11? Is 11 a double ton? And it's not. It only has one distinct digit, so it's going to get in here. It's going to increment it to 12. It'll loop back to the top. It'll check 12. It should say, yes, 12 is. And so once that happens, it won't increment anymore. It will break out of the while loop. And then we get down here. Finally, I think we can simply return next num at this point. And I think that's all we need. If you only have one line, it's like other constructs where you don't need the braces. You can just put it right underneath. But it's, some people prefer to have the braces too in case maybe you come back and add more lines later. But yeah, while loop, think about it like a for loop, but you don't have all those. You're not initializing the counter variable. So it's very important. You got to be careful with while loops that you don't get stuck in something called an infinite loop. Imagine if I had not incremented next num here, right? If I had not done this and maybe I had some other work I was doing, next num would stay the same value every time. And if it wasn't a double ton, it would just go and go and go and keep checking the same number over and over again. What a mess, right? Until eventually you time out. But that's no good. So you kind of have to, you're responsible for making sure that your while loops have exit conditions, you know, and that you're updating state so that it can reach that exit condition. So I think this is good. Um, this helper method, you know, just it's a lot made the work here simpler. So that's why I like to do that, make my life easier. But let's try it first, make sure it even works. Um, system link, okay, good, I got system link. We'll test. Initial reports are good. And we're clear for takeoff, good deal. So yeah, we had um, distinct this time. It's a, I don't think we've used that yet, that's a good one. Like I said, do look at the methods available and enumerable from time to time until you just get those down. Remember in that recent challenge, there's one average I had completely forgotten about and uh, that would have helped me a bit. So good practice. And that's the point of this series too, right? We're gonna be hitting lots of these things and so they'll come into your site. One other thing I'll leave you with before I submit is you could think that my method for solving this problem isn't the most efficient, right? Basically I'm incrementing by one every time until I find the right number. But you could imagine this being kind of wasteful, right? Imagine if the number passed in was one. And so I would check one and any single digit number can't be a double ton, right? You need two distinct digits. And so anything under 10 doesn't even, isn't even possible, right? And so I'm incrementing one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, until I get into a range where it can happen. And so, you know, you could imagine maybe one little optimization you do is that you say, hey, if the value's under 10, um, return 10, the first 
the first double ton value. And so then you start to think about other number ranges. What happens when you have a double digit number, right? You just basically have to make sure that the digits don't match. You wouldn't want a 44. So most of the time you're probably just adding one, but if that add one would land on a double digit number, you would add two basically. And so there's various cases you can think about and um, that could be a good exercise to try and optimize your code. You can see my run time was like 203 milliseconds, but you could try to get that time down with optimizations. I'm not going to do that here, but when this comes up would be as if you're working on a project, right? And imagine that a method like this is called all the time. And so it's spending a lot of time here. Then it may be worth the trouble of trying to think about how you can really optimize it. If we're only using this method once, you know, and I spend a month trying to get the perfect algorithm to solve it the fastest way possible, you know, my boss isn't going to be very happy with me. That's not a very good use of time. You know, I could have optimized something that is used a lot more to get bigger gains, right? So that's something to keep in mind. If you just want the the exercise, the brain teaser on how to do that, that's that's good too and a, a worthwhile pursuit. I'm going to leave it at this. We'll see. I'll submit mine and we'll see. I imagine somebody went to the trouble to, to optimize this to some degree, but we'll see. So we're clear. I'll go ahead and submit. We're fine. Okay. Thank you. And look at that. We went over 200 Caillou. Pat yourself on the back if you've been following along to this point. We made it. Let's go for 300. So, yeah, number distinct to array. Num to array. Yeah, they're adding one each time. Pretty similar to what we did, right? Yeah, there may have been some optimization going on here. Yeah, see, like if if the input length is just one, meaning a single digit number, just return 10. So yeah, you could go through and try and do these. And see, they're checking if the two digits uh, match. You know, if the length two, you have a double digit number, you can check if the numbers match. Then you just return, if they do match, you can just take the next number. Otherwise, you got to make sure incrementing doesn't make them the same. So yeah, that's cool that somebody was was doing that, you know. Anyway, if you came up with something cool, please share it. I love to see the solutions. If you have questions, leave them below. And I'll see you in the next challenge. Thanks.